My nickname growing up was Georgie because my middle name is Georgina. Uh, the only nickname I had as a kid was Nicholas. That's a big one. Mom's always calling me J-Boy uh, or Boyo. And then all kinds of iterations, Georgie Porgy and so on. She would never call me Dean, always Nicholas, and usually with a stern tone, which to me means that she probably lost an argument with my father about what I should be named. <laughs> no. <laughs> if I haven't, do I make one up? Sorry, that was a boring one, but I haven't. Best How to Train a Dragon dream I've ever had. I'm living it. Well, leading up to the writing of How to Train Your Dragon in the Hidden World, I had a dream, and it was about a hole in the sea, almost like a 360-degree Niagara Falls. The water was spilling into it. And I came back and told our production designer about that dream, and that ultimately became the entrance that the hidden world is accessed through. Well, uh, that's just my favorite question to answer because I'm a massive history nerd. Oh my goodness. I think I would have loved to have lived in the 30s as film was really getting started and kind of the classic days of studio movies. I won't say I would have loved to have lived, but I would love to see England and France uh, during the Hundred Years' War, given the fact that you'd get to see uh, Henry V, uh, Joan of Arc. Just seeing Orson Welles make Citizen Kane would have been an amazing experience. I mean, I'd like to say that living in the time where there were dragons, but I feel like that's not really a time, but in the Viking world just in case there were dragons and I could meet them. I've always been really drawn to Pegasus. Unicorns, that would be fun. Agreed, it would be pretty crazy to just be walking in the woods and be like, holy smokes, it's a unicorn. The three words I would use to describe the hidden world are. Wonder. Beautiful. Amazing. Fun. Adventure. Gorgeous. Heart. Important. And emotional for me, I guess. Always remember where you left your ax. <laughs> Be true to yourself, whatever uh, the cost, and to know that what, what the world tells you are failings can often be virtues. I suppose one nugget of wisdom that I've taken away from the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy is that these films have a huge impact on audiences out there. They become very special to a lot of people, and so we take great care in how we handle the characters and how we treat the story, bringing it to an end.